Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Red Hat Certified System Administrator series. Today's video is on login, login and switch users in multi-user targets. So the first thing to, to talk about is multi-user targets, what does that even mean? So multi-user targets means that literally you can have multiple users running on that system. So uh, Fred can be logged in at the same time as George, for example, and they could all have different permissions, etc. So you know it's pretty familiar if you know any kind of OS. It's it's a standard thing. However, within um, Linux, you have the concept of a run level. These run levels go from zero to all the way to six, and each of those run levels. Um, have generally a different property so it may load up in a different manner um, depending on that so there's, a, there's actually a concept of a single user mode and then there's a multi user mode the single user mode is generally for maybe um, I need to do an emergency patch or something I need to bring it off the network or make sure no one else is logging in so you bring it into single user mode you do your patch and then you can bring it back up to the full multi user mode for example you may also use the single user mode for, I don't know, you've forgotten the root password, you can boot into single user mode and reset the password, for example. So uh, there are the, the six levels, I will just run through the each one, and, and I've also put it in the the, uh, the video description as well, but there's, I'll just list them quickly here. So there's run level zero, which is to shut down the system or halt the system. Run level one, single user mode. Two multi-user mode without networking so what does that mean so you get you don't get the full graphical interface what we see here you get just a directly to the terminal prompt and you log in with a local user only and with that local user you can do your normal uh, you can run normal commands etc however you've got no app out, uh, access to the internet because you've got an or, or any other network devices because you're it, without networking is network is disabled then you've got run level 3 which is full multi-user mode this is not the graphical interface again this is just the that command prompt but with networking as well run level 4 it's currently unused in most systems uh, they may, you may find systems elsewhere that, that do use it but it's generally not used you can you can add your own uh, run level differences so you could actually potentially put a particular application only runs in run level 4 if you really wanted to. Run level 5 is what we're looking at right now which is the uh, X11 display which is the, you know, the graphical properties, it's, uh, X11 is like an application that runs that it does all this uh, display, you hear what we've seen. Uh, and then finally run level 6 which is literally just to reboot the system. So you notice at the, uh, each extremity we've got the shutdown or the reboot. So let me just show you how that works in in uh, in here. So we just go in here and we can just do a run level. Just run the run command run level. So we have the number five. So that's the X11 display, which makes total sense. So what we can do is we can do a command init, and we could say you know init free, and we go to a uh, that that just a prompt with full networking access but we've got no GUI so we can just switch between the two in it for free five etc so that's yeah so that that's really so we just literally could specify a number for you okay cool so and on basis of that we were, we we're looking for the multi-user mode uh, targets so that would be anything above uh, from level two and above so that's the run level two, which is the without networking, is based on multi-user target. So what we do first is to to uh, show you how to to change users, etc. We're gonna just add a user first, so sudo sudo user add, and we just create a, a amazingly well-named user called user one. Just give my password. Okay, so we've got the prompt straight back without any error messages, so that's probably a good sign. 
So, do you want to sign into? Let's sign into that user account. So we do a sue, which changes the user, and then user one. Password. We didn't set a password, did we? So what is the password? So we can do. We have to do sudo password command and then the user account. So the user account was user one. Okay, so we set a password. Okay, so now I've got the uh, the accepted the authentication tokens and I run that as sudo again. So let's do that sue again. I now know the password, thankfully. Cool. So now, if you noticed, we have user1 at red hat 8. So, but notice it's extra C England here. So, what it's saying is, I have signed to as that user, but I do who am I? User1. Yep. However, I am I am still using the environment variables from the C England user, my original user. So that can cause issues. So uh, for, for a good example is um, Oracle has a, a database application. Oracle is a you know it is a big data database application and it usually runs as a user called Oracle. It could be it could be called something else, but generally use it as an Oracle user. And that Oracle user has all these uh, environment variables to allow the Oracle application to be run as that user. So if you just did a sue and that username, you would not get all the environment variables, and therefore the application wouldn't work for you. So that that can be across all different uh, applications, but it's just a one good example. So if we just do an exit again, okay. So we're back to my original prompt. We run that, that sue. However, we just add a little dash there. This dash means to use the the user the user one's environment variables. So we run this same command again. can now see I'm actually at the user one and I've got I'm at the user one's home see that's now I've got actually got all the environment variables for that user okay then there is another user a lot of people may be interested in and that's the root user or the administrative user this is essentially the, the as as from a Windows perspective the admin user or administrator user so to change that root user typically just do a sue and just a dash you can specify the root however this application is already aware that most likely you want to sue to root to you know run application uh, run that particular application to that root user or uh, you may need to do some administrative tasks, and you may you may do lots of lots and lots of tasks. So you want, don't want to do sudo every single time. So you can just sue to the user. Uh, you can see now I'm as root for that account. So if I again just do a who am I? You've got the root user. Okay. So what else can we learn about the user account? So we could do a change minus L and we can do it against the user. You can see when the last password is set is that when the password expires active if the account ever expires password changes. So you can actually set all these values so we can do uh, minimum password age doesn't matter maximum password age we can say one perhaps last password change is that date Password expiration warning. We can set that to uh, let's say this is, uh, one. Password inactive. Yeah. But account expiration date. So if we set it to there uh, to so if I set it six, let's do twenty one. Okay. So now if we exit and try and log in as user one. There you go. 
the account has been expired. So if we do that again, so we do that change command, just do a clear to make it a bit, it's getting a bit too much stuff. I'll have to do a sudo because I'm not the root user. User one. Did you notice something? It didn't ask me for the password this time. It's because the sudo uh, actually keeps the it keeps like a cache that you've actually logged in previously. It, it does time out eventually, but it, it does keep a cache that you've done it before. So you can see the account has expired there, that line there. So to fix that, we can do the same change command. Uh, to skip all through all this, let the same one, doesn't matter. And then we can just set that expiration date to, let's just say, let's just do next month on the first. Now we can do the same, login as a user. See, your password expiring one day now, message. Because I set the maximum password age of one. Okay, so we can fix that as well. Let's just do again. Minimum password age. Maximum possibility, let's set that to let's say 30 days. Last password change is fine. Password expiration warning seven days before. Password inactive, we're going to worry about that. Cool, now let's do that again. No warning. Excellent, so that's the user fixed. Right, so that's within the CLI how to log in and see a bit of information about a particular user and you know the who am I command etc let's do this from the graphical interface it's pretty simple but let's just for the sake of completeness let's do that so if we go into the right hand corner here we've got my current user we can log out or switch user so switch user will keep my session logged in um, but will allow me to log in as a different user which is similar to that su command or the logout will is of course complete logout so let's try the switch user first note I've got uh, an additional user here listed so user 1 pop the password in and lo and behold it will log in with that account yeah, it's pretty simple okay so let's log this user out Let's go prompt to say, sure you want to log out. And we have, we should be logged out that user in a second. So back to login screen, login, and back to myself again. That's all there is really to it. Um, so that completes, concludes this video. Um, I hope it's been informative. Uh, if there's anything additional, uh, you think I should cover with regards to this uh, subject please uh, comment below if you've liked this video please hit the like button um, and I would appreciate if you subscribe to my uh, channel that would be awesome um, thanks again for watching I'll catch you in the next one thank you